2024 Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy hit out at CNN's Caitlin Collins after a contentious interview, tweeting yesterday, Hilarious interview with CNN last night. Felt like I was talking to a petulant teenager. Now, if you remember, Caitlin pressed Ramaswamy on comments he made suggesting 9-11 was an inside job. Let's look back at some of that interview. Excuse me, give another comment that you've made that is getting attention yeah. today about 9-11. A report in The Atlantic that you gave an interview to, you said, quote, I think it is legitimate to say how many police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers. Maybe the answer is zero. It probably is zero for all I know, right? I have no reason to think it was anything other than zero. But if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission. Absolutely, there should be an answer the public knows the answer to. Explain to me what you meant there. This is really, it's funny. I mean, the Atlantic is playing the same game as CNN. It's funny. What I said is on January 6th, I do believe that there were many federal agents in the field and we deserve to know who they are. On 9-11, what I've said is that the government lied. And this is incontrovertible evidence, Caitlin. The government lied about Saudi Arabia's involvement. There was a Saudi spy named Al-Bayoumi who they lied and the government lied and the 9-11 commission lied. We know that because declassified reports in 2021 Which revealed that Al-Bayoumi was indeed. What's that? Yeah, the report that the President Biden declassified. Yes. But your quote here, are you telling me that the quote is wrong 20 years later, here? yeah. But are you telling me that I'm your quote is wrong, wrong here actually. because it says how many federal actually, agents were on I, the plane at the asked, Twin Towers? <laughs> yeah, when, when, I, when I actually, and this is just lifting the curtain on how media works again, I asked that reporter to send the recording because it was on the record. He refused to do it. But we had a free-flowing conversation. The truth is there are lies the government has told about 9-11, but it's not the ones that somebody put in my mouth. It's the one that I articulated. Now, in a televised appearance yesterday, Ramaswamy appeared to walk back his comments by suggesting his statements were misinterpreted and, and, and taken out of context. People should read it. There are yep. a lot of September 11th families who feel that there was more Saudi involvement than we have been privy to. I think that yep. the comments about federal agents on planes, uh, you know, really uh, sort of sent people uh, sort of wondering what you were talking about. As but, you would, as gonna... you, you probably have experienced with the left-wing media as well. The Atlantic's purposefully uh, really scripted out something well, that, that was... was taken in a very different context. Uh, well, we just but, played but... your soundbite from there, but I, I want to ask yeah. you one more question. However, Atlantic writer John Hendrickson, who originally published the story that contained interviews with Vivek Ramaswamy, maintains that he was not misquoted in his story, and he's got the transcripts and audio to show that. Let's play some of it. What is the truth about January 6th? I don't know. But we can handle it. Whatever it is, we can handle it. But what government is it? agents, how many government agents were in the field? Right? You mean like entrapment? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Why can the government not be transparent about something that we're using? Terrorists, or the kind of tactic used by terrorists, if we find that there are hundreds of our own in the ranks of the day that they were, that they were, I mean, look. Well, there's a difference between entrapment and a difference between a law enforcement agent I, I, identifying I think, it's, I think it is legitimate to say how many police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers. Like, I think we want it, maybe the answer is zero, probably is zero for all I know, right? No reason to think it was anything other than zero. But if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission, absolutely that should be an answer the public knows the answer to. So in case you weren't following that word for word, uh, that was an accurate representation of how Caitlin Collins quoted him in their uh, interview together. Now, in response to the audio release, Ramaswamy's communications director, Trisha McCullen, said in a statement, quote, we are grateful that The Atlantic released the audio after we repeatedly asked them to do so. The audio clearly demonstrates that Vivek was taken badly out of context, and even this small snippet proves that. What do you make of that particular response? And can you characterize what you think in good faith her perception is or Vivek's perception is of the missing context here? Look, um, I think in that interview, as demonstrated by the audio, we just heard um, Vivek did went a little went astray and said something about agents being on the planes, which is not which is not an assertion. I've heard anyone make before 
And even he said he, it's probably not likely, but he's just asking questions, right? So the broader context, by the way, which didn't, we never get into is he was talking about 1-6 and the fact that many people believe that it was a an op, that there were federal agents that encouraged right. people to break into the uh, federal building and that... It, 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 mm-hmm. it was by design, right, that the government did it. It really wasn't these individuals. They were basically set up. And so the implication is, were there federal agents on the, on 9/11, on the airplane during 9-11? Is also, did the government also instigate that tragedy? Right. Which is a big claim to just be asking questions about. So I get that he, even in the context of his own quote, says, well, the, the number is probably zero. But there is some question as to why you would even raise that implication yeah. if Look, you don't believe there's some possibility, some likelihood, in fact, but it that doesn't, it'll be true. It doesn't sound like he does think that. He got a little over his skis answering this question, sure. and it's not a good quote, and he's kind of walked it back, and I, I don't think it's that important. I mean, the media yeah. has been covering this like wall-to-wall. It, it feels very much like a gotcha. It's like a legitimate gotcha because what he said in the transcript of that was not a a good thing to say. It's a little outside the bounds. It's not mm-hmm. well supported. It doesn't even sound like he thinks that. He mm-hmm. was doing a, I'm asking questions, but it's it's right to ask questions and be skeptical. Even about uh, about January 6th, which I, you know, as our audience has heard my comments on the subject before, I absolutely lay the blame for it at Trump's feet. It is still the case that most of the people there were engaged in nonviolent First Amendment activity. It is the case that that there was that uh, Ray Epps individual, you know, who's he was even shouted down by the other, you know, uh, patriot group around him, people saying, yeah, we need to go in. They're saying, nope, you're a Fed if you say mm-hmm. that. Um, and there is also a, a long history of entrapment style police. Uh, tactics against um, all sorts of, you know, politically disfavored groups, um, including uh, white nationalist groups, um, patriot groups, militia groups. The Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping the governor of Michigan is is beyond any shadow of a doubt have, has been yeah, shown course. to be definitively orchestrated by uh, by this, these militia members who are being paid to continue the plan by federal law enforcement right. so that they would be able to charge the people in the, in Bla- the conspiracy. Black Panthers. That happens other- Black Panthers. It yeah. happens to Islamic, young Islamic teenage men on social media sites. Yes. W- venting frustration will be will be contacted yes. by federal okay, officers, so we, we, we so all that stuff, which is what he was saying. He didn't say it. He, the way yeah, he brought in 9-11 the planes was dumb. Here, here's the problem. Who cares? I, I'm, a, I'm of two minds about this. If you really think that America did 9-11, there are plenty of people that agree with you. And go ahead and stand by it and make your case. Mm-hmm. If you if you have evidence, if you want to if you want to be a 9-11 like there's, I, I'm very, I'm, as a human being, my constitution is. I'm very, I'm open to a lot of conspiracy theories mm-hmm. because that's the nature of conspiracy. And I know that the government does terrible things. Okay, but it's obviously ill-advised in the context of running for president when most people see 9/11 as one of the worst tragedies that have ever been fall, befallen America. To start speculating along those lines when one, you don't have any evidence, and mm-hmm. two. You don't apparently even believe it, and you crumble under even a little bit of pressure and pushback. So here's my question. I, I agree with you that it feels like a, a bit of a gotcha that is perhaps being milked if he just slipped up his words a little bit and people are trying to make a lot out of it because yeah. they don't like Vivek Ramaswamy and the liberal happened, media, et cetera, et cetera. That, that is up to a point. The point at which he gets on Caitlin Collins' show, and instead of just saying, you know what? I don't actually believe that there's any anything untoward that happened with 9-11. There's no evidence for it. I was just making a broader point about why people believe in conspiracy theories. Instead of doing that, I'm sorry, he smeared and patronized Caitlin Collins. He said she was a petulant child in the aftermath of that interview. He was, I'm sorry, very disrespectful and, and d- dismissive in a way that maybe is justified if you were correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you were correct and you're really getting railroaded and lied about on the liberal media. But in fact, she was simply asking you to justify and contextualize her comments, and you could have really made her look like she had egg on her face if you just said, look, I am running on a lot of things that are really important to the American people. I admit that this isn't one of them and not even something that I'm especially committed to. Let's get back to the issues that matter. Yeah. Instead of trying to make it um, a manhood swinging contest with a reporter at a certain point, I'm sorry, it, I, the, to me, the, the biggest fault I would put on Vivek Ramaswamy in this is not 
getting out over his skis, as you put it, but choosing to come off as so hostile and domineering. When someone like RFK Jr., we've seen him in these situations, and to his credit, he, he says things like, you know what, I have to look into that. I'm not as familiar with that issue. I'm, ha I'm happy to reflect on that. I'll come back to you on that. I mean, he was pretty th thunderously upset. I mean, I mean, he didn't call anyone a petulant child, but about how his comments were misconstrued in the mainstream media. I've never seen RFK Jr. behave that way to a member of the media. He's very critical of the media. Mm -hmm. He calls out where their misrepresentations. I have never be seen him. I've watched many, many hours of RFK Jr. content. I have never seen him behave so dismissively to another human being in any context, no matter how adversarial these interviews are. I think that's part of why he was able to be so successful and be so much on the rise. And I am a little concerned. Vivek Ramaswamy has seen some success in polls in recent weeks, but he has. There's some danger, I think, of him being as politically right in a way that is alienating to some of the Republican base as Donald Trump, without Donald Trump's kind of humor and mm -hmm. charm, if you will. And also having the worst qualities of Ron DeSantis, where Ron DeSantis comes off as kind of peevish and unlikable in a lot of these media contexts, despite having some of Ron DeSantis' better qualities, like being more informed and articulate than, say, a Donald Trump. And there's a, there's a weird way where he could be pulling the worst of both of those, as well as some of the best of both of those. And I don't know how those are going to fight out in the long term. Attacking CNN is obviously something that the Republican primary base enjoys. Ron DeSantis' big mistake there is not giving them any fodder because he doesn't do enough mainstream so Robbie, interviews. Even, even in that to Fox create... interview, at the end, the last clip that we played there, it felt like the Fox News host even was like, Vivek popped in with like, and the liberal media tried to get me, right? And she was like, well, well here's but, your comments. <laughs> well, but we'll see what, what uh, I love that host, Martha McCallum. Um, we'll see, you know, what the viewers think and what she thinks could be different things. That, that, that's true. But I mean, at a certain point, at a certain point, if you have egg on your face, you were wrong. Like, you, you, I mean, he, yeah, it just he lied, Robbie. Much. At the end well, of the day, he said that he was misquoted, that that was not an accurate quote. Caitlin Collins says on the show, well, yeah. is this an inaccurate quote? Like, she was giving him the benefit of the doubt. And he says, yes, yes, it is. I was misquoted. And then you, right. you there's a tape. Said, he should have just said, um, I'm sorry if I gave the impression that I thought like there were federal agents in planes. I absolutely don't think that. Right. Um, if that's the impression you got, that's wrong. Right. That's not what I mean. I was just talking I in general that. about how on. you know we don't know the full story about a, a lot of subjects. January 6, other things, maybe 9/11 as well. I don't trust the government in general. Sure. But I was not saying anything about that. I get that. Let's move on. I get that. That's how I would. Do I, it. Well, I hope this is lessons learned because he is on an upswing, and I do think there's yeah. a lot of appetite for his brand of politics out there. I'm just not sure picking, like making unnecessary enemies. Like the, 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 the media, the corporate media, both liberal and conservative, makes enough mistakes and is biased enough. He referred to the Atlantic as left wing. That's LOL, because the left can't stand the Atlantic because it's a neocon, <laughs> warmongering institution well, I'm, headed I'm, by Jeffrey Goldberg. I'm the only person on, well, on the extent <laughs> I'm on the right, who understands the difference between liberals, progressives, and the left. But that's the thing. That, that, as <laughs> Everyone long as, else condenses I, I'm those very categories. Skeptical, and, and kudos to you for that, Robbie. Yes. You're head above the rest. But I... I, it, is a, it is a problem when I see people who are riling against these institutions in a way that they should, but in a way that seems to be trying to preserve the integrity of other corporate institutions that just happen to be on their side. If you're a conservative saying, I hate the corporate media, but I love Fox News, if, if you sound just like a liberal who's like, I hate Fox News, but I love the Atlantic, I mean, Fox it's Fox has taken a lot of heat from conservatives these days, though. I, yeah, that, and that, those people have a lot more integrity. But if they're, taking, if they're mad at Fox simply because they fired Tucker and not because they have always been, like all of these institutions, corporate media that have, uh, are beholden to advertisers and have the same kind of biases and built-in problems as all of it, well, then are you really well, not, upset not, at corporate media or are you just upset at— the guy you don't like, the politics you don't like. Well, that is what the, conservative media doesn't have. The, it's not or conservative viewers and people don't have the same hostility to corporate media. Right? Is a is an independent and left. They say thing. they do. Y yes, but not because but not because it's corporate, because it's establishment and toes a mainstream narrative that is hostile to their worldview. What, what does establishment mean? What what motivates the establishment? That's a very good point, Robbie, because this is my fundamental problem with some of these right populists. Yeah, well, this what is, is your... But, what there, is your, but it's a, it's a, it is a actual... 
disagreement but, but and difference of opinion. What is your politics? What, what makes the establishment bad? Is it just an empty word like elite? Or do you have a core idea of there's a group of people whose interests... Because it's pushing interest, policies that they think are harmful wait, to them. A core of people whose interests, whose motivations, or political interests are fundamentally misaligned with yours because of their material status no, in this that is, country. Right. That is I, not I, what this site I know, thinks. That's I know what their your answer site is no. It's a general disagreement. I know, that's, I know the answer is no, Robbie, but I'm trying to make a point here. My point is that that is why they are so frequently misled by people who create a fake version of politics that appeals to them and leads them exactly into Astray. That's why Donald Trump can get on the debate stage in 2016 and say a lot of good, true-sounding things about the swamp and then get into office and appoint all of these Wall Street tycoons and revolving door animals right back into the swamp that he said he was going to drain. And so my, my point is not, it's a rhetorical question I'm asking and imploring conservative viewers who I think have the right instinct to say at the end of the day, I'm not I, expecting them to agree with my politics, but if your problem is that people who work in industries then go and enter the government to regulate their own industries in a way that is self-serving and self beneficial, if your problem is that the, the pharmaceutical titans and all of those people are writing our, our public policy and the government is corrupt, that is correct. But just saying the government is corrupt because it's the government, you're going to you're going to be exploited if you don't have an actual more sophisticated analysis of why it is the people you don't like aren't acting in your interest. And it's not just vibes. And the same thing, the same thing I would argue uh, is true when you're talking about media critique. People aren't just sitting around saying, oh, I just want to be evil. What is motivating people and having the approach that they have. But it is genuinely different values because, well, not that I can speak on behalf of all conservative people or something, but conservatives have a different political ideology. It's not like they don't hate um, businesses or even very you know, wealthy people just making money for its own sake. They don't like but that's not what stigmatize I'm or demonize I, I, that. I, I agree. They, I understand they don't that. Want, they don't want the government supporting um, progressive cultural, social, and economic values well, no. that they don't. I agree I, with. I think like that it's, that it's, a, it's a fundamental different. I mean, a lot of these people want abortion to be illegal. They want well, a lot of them gay don't. marriage to be illegal. They want most of them do not. In the, the we're talking majority, about conservative primary voters. The, the over majority of Republicans do not want gay marriage to be illegal. Gay marriage has flown the shark. Even I think Republicans they do. don't try to. No, gay marriage has been enormously popular poll wise for years now. Among among Republican among primary Republicans, voters, yes. I think it's pretty close. And like the vast majority of them I, I don't, are I don't, like I don't. I'm just saying there are different values. You can't say well Robbie, why if they would just get understand that the corporate media is is and corporate corporations and their influence on government is bad. I mean they agree that, but at the end of the day they want fundamentally different policies. I don't know. I, I I feel like I said that explicitly. I said I explicitly said that I understand that there's a, a value gap. I'm not asking people to understand my values, but if you are waking up confused as to why, or you expect someone like Donald Trump to do what he said he was going to do, I'm not asking. I'm not talking about my agenda. Donald Trump didn't fulfill his own agenda, his own promises to his constituency. You have to ask yourself reasons why, and so you don't get led down that same primrose path of false promises again and again. David Ramaswamy, who is he as a person? How did he make his money? What does his entire life up to this point tell you about what his core values are? And then what do you expect him to do with those values when he gets into office? And are you going to use that as, a, as an indicator of how he's going to lead as a potential president? Or are you going to lead, are you using the fact that he says, I hate the Atlantic, I hate the corporate media, as though someone who's spent his entire life from Harvard to Yale to the biopharmaceutical industry to being named an ESG world leader. He objects to that and asks them to take that down. But that is the world that he has been living in. And so I don't know, maybe people can change. People can change. But voters have to be clear-eyed about the likelihood of that given people's priors and the ideological commitments that they have made throughout their entire tenure before they started running for president. Yeah, well, I'm not, like, not a big defender of him or something. If you know, voters can make up their mind whether they believe his pivot, given some of that background that you, uh, you, you elucidated, that is, as far as I can tell, is his actual background, that he was a you know, World Economic Forum um, uh, fellow or yeah. something like that. Um, I mean, he has been denouncing ESG for like for a long time, well, you know, well before he was running for yeah, since president. He, I'm not trying to say this dismissively, but since he yeah. wrote this book, Woke Inc., and was walk, is promoting 
that book. Now, I'm right. sure he had the ideology before he wrote the book. That's why he wrote the book. But the demon is, But that's how he came onto the is, scene. Just because you are a, an elite or you're well-educated or you worked in an industry that's profitable like the pharmaceutical industry doesn't automatically make you an enemy of conservative people. Maybe it automatically makes you an enemy no. of left populists. No, no, no. But it's what I, kind of I, influence are they exerting I, not, and is it contrary to the policies that conservative people want? I'm not talking about want? conservative people, not an enemy of conservative people. Is he going to be looking out for the interests of poor and working people? That's the question. Right. It's a this question about, for left populists. No, it's a question for poor and working people who are looking to vote for someone who's going to uplift their interests. And what poor and working people are going to have to ask is, do I care more about the woke politics, which it's, if you care about that, I'm not trying to tell you you shouldn't. I don't, but God bless, that's your choice. But what they're, the gamble of these people is, are you going to care more about that than the fact that he has a plan to cut Social Security and Medicare? If you go to Vivek Ramaswamy's website right now, he says he wants to end Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society programs, the flat, the keystone of which is Medicare and, Me and, and Medicaid. If you, I know what you think about it, Robbie. You should you do that. You think that. But these are two of the most popular social programs in the world. Most of our grandparents, most of our grandparents, people who are not don't come from affluent families, are heavily reliant on these programs to, to, to not be destitute in the street they were before the 1950s. The, the elderly mm -hmm. poverty rate was decimated by those great programs, and that is Our why elderly so many people are very them. wealthy. And I think well, even a lot of young my, conservative people are sick of the transfer, <laughs> of the upward transfer of Robbie, wealth and power to the elderly. Robbie, the, the one percent, like the, there are, there are, there is this glut of very wealthy elites that are sitting on these houses and making life miserable for everybody else. But the average American income is fifty thousand dollars a year. There's no most of anything in America that is very wealthy. People are struggling. We yeah. sit on the show every day and talk about how people are struggling. We talk about inflation and Biden being crap. Many people are struggling. And, and the inflation being high because there's seniors on budgets that are trying to make do with the with 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 cost of living adjustments that don't keep up. Although Biden did help with that for for seniors, so we'll give him credit for that. And with prices of goods going up, and with housing costs going up, and now they have to start paying their student loans back. The, the largest, <laughs> gr the, no, the largest <laughs> growing group of people that owe student debt. Conservative people want them to pay back their loans. Can I just, like, let me just make the point: the largest I, growing I'm people. Let it <laughs> <laughs> the largest, the largest growing population of people with student debt are seniors. So you can say that they deserve to. I, I'm not making a, a value argument. I know that you think that they should have to pay the debt, but this is the reality. People have to vote on their pocketbooks and what benefits them in life. So you can say they shouldn't vote right. in their self-interest, I guess, or maybe they value some well, of this other stuff don't more. Think and that's voting fair. in their self-interest to just like. Yes, voting in your self-interest to just take money from other people and give it to you or other people is that's not again that's not a conservative value. How Maybe it, that's a left wait, populist wait, wait, value. I, I I don't qualify for student debt forgiveness. I I made more than I, I wasn't know. saying you so, specifically. So I, I'm talking about someone's grandparent that might lose their social security benefits, their Medicaid, and their uh, and and have to because of Joe Biden to be clear have to start paying perhaps hundreds of dollars a year. Uh, a month in student loan payments starting in the I, fall. I don't think the conservative plan is to immediately end these programs, but to recognize that minute. they are insolvent in the long run. I, Vivek need... Ramaswamy, who we're talking about, specifically says one of his core plans on his website, if you go and Google it at VivekRamaswamy2024.com or whatever it is, is to cut Social Security and Medicaid. Uh, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to smear the guy. That's what he wants. And many of you out there are, I want that as well. But many of you don't. Polls suggest... The popularity of the, the program suggests that many of you don't want that at all. And so the question is, are you being misled by someone who is willing to give you the cultural fodder that you want because it doesn't hurt them, mm -hmm. their bank account, their ability to become a billionaire at age 37, a uh, multimillionaire, I'm sorry, at the age 37 through the biopharmaceutical industry and deregulation and all of the things that benefit the very wealthy in this country, maybe you like that. Maybe you're hoping it'll trickle down to you. Maybe you hope that you yeah, also can make money that way. And conservative people believe that deregulation benefits everyone because then the good, the service, the drug, whatever it is, costs less money and there's more competition you and can there's you less can believe industry that. capture for one specific... God bless. If you believe that, that's fine. But the, the question fundamentally is going to be, do you, are, are you going to take someone who says there are two genders? Is, is that going to feed you at night? Is, is Vivek Ramaswamy declaring as part of his 10, um, what do you call it? Platform. Ten Commandments. 
no, he has this, he calls them the Ten Commandments, and he, he reads through them at some of his events. The first one. Those are, are the, um, those are the rules that God gave Moses in the, in the desert? Y yes. Uh, I'm familiar with what they are. Vivek Ramaswamy's version includes not, thou shalt not cover another man's wife, or thou shalt not murder, but there are two genders, fine. If you get, if that, if that is very, very important to you, all due respect, that's fine. But the, the, what he is hoping, what, what candidates like that are hoping, in my humble opinion, is that you care more about someone owning the lives by saying that there are two genders mm -hmm. than you being able to age into old age and having health insurance. Yeah, I, I think uh, only believing there's two genders is obviously very important to the right, but it's not just that. And there is a whole base of right-wing Republican people who are not acting like you're making it sound like you think they're secretly leftists, except they hate wokeness. No, so they'll never I don't recognize think they're they secretly actually leftists, support Robbie. a left I do populist think they policy. Want they want seniors. lower taxes and less regulation, and they want the government programs to be not non existent, but to be fair. You pay into them and you get you get what you paid it, you get that eventually, and fair to everyone and structured differently, not in a way that benefits, it overlaps with some left-wing populism because they don't want to structure it in a way that benefits massive pharmaceutical companies I, I, or anything I, like you, that. You don't have to so make this argument because I don't believe that they're leftists. What I do believe is nine out of 10 Americans who receive social security have a, a very or somewhat favorable opinion of the program. The number for Medicare benefits is 84%. It's gonna be broke by the time the people paying into it now would get any benefits. And 55% of Republicans. That's just like, we have to deal with that. 55% of Republicans, according to a 2021 Gallup poll, support same-sex marriage. So the majority of Republicans at I point. support same-sex marriage, and I have no problem with a minimal welfare state to take care of the, you know, uh, the, the, the people who most need help, but it's not even, it's not even particularly conservative to say these things obviously need some restructuring because there's massive waste and the costs are not controlled. But, all right, we went way longer than we were supposed to <laughs> on that one. Uh, more rising after this.